Just south and across the road from Milton General Hospital is the West Roxbury Metro Station. This is the final location in our tour of Roxbury, and inside we find an interesting puzzle. Like every building in Roxbury, the West Roxbury Metro Station is swarming with super mutants. This station is a grisly scene with meat bags and bloody skeletons all over the place. I was especially surprised and disturbed by the hanging skeleton in one of the bathroom stalls of the men's restroom. This is really the first time I've seen this. I see bones, meat, skulls, bags of viscera, but an entire bleeding skeleton hanging upside down over a toilet. That was rather disturbing. In the next stall over, we find a trigger, and disarming it deactivates a makeshift bomb on the toilet, allowing you to safely loot a stash of caps. The women's restroom is locked with a novice lock. Inside we find a first aid kit, and in the middle stall we find the skeleton of a woman with a stack of bills near her hand and a camera. This is the second time we've found someone with a camera in a rather intimate area. Remember in Fallon's we found the skeleton of a man on top of a ladder hanging over a stall holding a camera. He was clearly a voyeur spying on women in the stall next to him, and here we find a woman with money and a camera. In the stall directly next to hers, we find one item of Mentats, and her hand is reaching underneath the stall. Now due to the money, my initial reaction is to think of a chem deal. But with the camera, maybe this was a journalist trying to bust a notorious chem dealer who worked out of the West Roxbury Metro Station bathrooms. This is just speculation, but it's fun to think about. Behind the ticket selling area, we find an ammo box, two bottles of whiskey under a skeleton, and an inaccessible door. This is chained from the other side. Turning left and down the hallway brings us to even more super mutants. <laughs> In this ticket booth, we find a laser sniper rifle, a stash of caps, and a stash of chems. We also find an expert locked floor safe underneath a locker. The stairway brings us down to the train tracks, which has one super mutant to kill. Good. Here, we find a rather puzzling scene. The doors to the train are all closed. Normally, we can board these subway tubes, but not these ones. There are also three glowing red buttons on this floor. The first is through the south door. There is nothing interesting in here but a roach corpse on the ground and a radio. The second is through the north door. Here, we find an opening to the right, which would allow us to board the train if the doors were open. And in the far corner, we find a skeleton with both a cooler and a nearby toolbox. The third button is back in the security room near to where we entered. Each of these buttons moves the trains, but to get out of the metro station, we have to push the buttons in the correct order. I'll show you how to solve this puzzle. First, push the button in the small security room. This causes the train closest to you to move, giving you access to a door in the train. Passing through the train to the platform in the middle, we find more hanging meat bags to the right, and yet another security gate to the left. Push the button in this room to activate train number two. You can then walk through the open doors to get to the third platform of the metro station. Like the first platform, this one has three different buttons. I'll show you which one to push, but let's explore this platform first. Directly to the left, sitting on a bench, we see a moment, frozen in time. Here, two men are engaged in a chem deal. The man on the left is wearing sunglasses and a fedora, and he's holding a bottle of Day Tripper. The man on the right offers a stack of bills to buy that day tripper. Or I suppose the man on the left could have bought it already and received the day tripper and given the money to the man on the right before the bombs dropped. Anyway, this scene tells us a little bit about how the nuclear fallout affected pre-war humans. It couldn't have been that violent, but it must have been incredibly deadly. After all, one man is still holding a stack of bills. The other man still has a hat on his head and he's wearing glasses. 
Both men are fully clothed, but none of them have any flesh left. This means that instead of being incinerated in a blast, they likely died of a gas or a poison. They must have died quickly because the very act of their chem deal is frozen in time. They're still in the act of trading chems, but the death must have been very gentle. Otherwise, their personal effects would have been disturbed. Of course, it's possible that I am overthinking this. After all, how could all of the flesh have decayed off of the bones and yet the sunglasses still cling to ears that no longer exist? Maybe the skeletons that we find in the Commonwealth are all posed by raiders with a dark sense of humor. After all, we know that every building in the Roxbury area was inhabited by raiders first before the super mutants moved in. This is clearly evidenced by Fallons, where we find raider corpses all over the place. I suppose it's possible that raiders found these skeletons and dressed them up to have a bit of a laugh. Although why they would waste a perfectly good bottle of day tripper, I guess we'll never know. So what's the answer, ladies and gentlemen? Are these the true activities that these people were engaged with 200 years ago, the very moment the bombs dropped, or are these skeletons toys having been posed by by raiders with diseased minds? Let me know in the comments. In the nearby nook, we find an advanced locked door, and through the door, we find the only terminal that gives us any hint of a story to West Roxbury Station. From this terminal, we finally learn exactly what's up with all of these buttons that control the trains. The first note tells us that during the month of October 2077, the very month that the bombs dropped, the West Roxbury Station was undergoing scheduled track maintenance. Buses replaced the trains during high traffic hours, and that this strategy was going to be employed until November 1st, 2077, which was many days after the bombs dropped. During these high traffic hours, the station would be closed. So in the month of October, officials would close the station and direct people to topside buses, which wouldn't be running on these tracks, of course, and they would be closing the station during high traffic hours. Well, the moment the bombs dropped must not have been during high traffic hours due to all of the skeletons we find around the station. The station was clearly not closed. The second entry says that officials have set up several maintenance test centers in West Roxbury Station to run diagnostics on monorails. This apparently explains all of those buttons that we've found so far in West Roxbury Station. Three on platform one, three on platform three. I've shown you one in the middle platform, platform two, but there's actually another one. All of those little stations with the buttons, I believe, are the stations mentioned in this terminal. This message tells the transit employees to avoid those buttons unless given proper authorization. I guess we can take away from this that the reason the buttons exist is because officials were performing track maintenance and using the buttons to run diagnostics on the monorails. If you go through the north door at the very end, we find an issue of tumblers today sitting next to a candle inside a broken locker. This makes picking locks easier. Heading north, we can find a button in the security gate to the left, but that's the wrong one. We want to walk past this security gate and through the door to the south. This leads us to the third button on the third platform, and this is the correct one. Walking through the train, we come to the middle platform. On the middle platform, we find a forklift and some construction barricades. And here we find a security cage with the final button inside. This is the one we push. This moves the final train to our location. But at first, it seems to be a dead end. The far door opens up to a gate. But it's not a dead end. This is the correct way. We just have to travel south along the tracks. This can be a little tricky in power armor. I got stuck multiple times and I had to use my jetpack to free myself. At the very end, we can turn right through a concrete arch to defeat a super mutant. Here we find an explosives box and a dirty mattress you can sleep on if you're doing this on survival. Passing south down the hallway, we pass through a door into what must have been a room for employees. Here we defeat another super mutant and we find a whole bunch of lockers. This is where you find Strong's bladed helmet. You find it sitting on a metal cabinet. You can find two pieces of super mutant armor in here. To find the next one, go out the door and climb the stairs, but be careful. You run smack dab into a bathroom scale connected to a fragmentation bouquet. At the top, we pass through a door and into the arms of a super mutant warlord and his hounds. Someone there! You're all right. Of ammo. 
Here we find a weapons workbench, the steamer trunk reward at the end of every major dungeon, a whole lot of Nuka Cola, including cherries and quantums, and the super mutant bracers. This place is a must visit for those of you who use Strong as your primary companion. On the eastern side of this room, we find the very same chained door that we encountered upon first entering the metro station. Here you can remove the chains and exit the way you came in. Now, it would be remiss of me to do a video on the West Roxbury Station without mentioning the second West Roxbury Station. That's right, there are two of them. It's a little confusing. Back outside, if you walk due west from the West Roxbury Station, you come upon some train tracks. Near the tracks are two towers, a water tower and a switching tower, near to an overturned orange train car. Like everything at Roxbury, super mutants inhabit these towers. Now, the reason we know that this is West Roxbury Station is because if you go up into the switching tower, we find a terminal that says West Roxbury Station Terminal. Is this somehow connected to the West Roxbury Station that we just explored? No, I guess that there are two West Roxbury stations. One is the West Roxbury Metro Station for commuter travel, and one is the West Roxbury Freight Station for freight travel. Both stations are in West Roxbury, but they have different purposes and are run probably by different organizations. Incidentally, if you follow the tracks north, you find a beautiful pre-war engine. We'll be doing a video on trains and engines in the near future. And an interesting static encounter. Here we find a small brick building. As you get close, sirens blare. You can try to access the nearby terminal before the doors open, but it can be tricky. Using this terminal, you can release two construction protectrons, and then use the protectron override software from Watts Electronics to turn them into allies, which will help you in the looming battle. I was going to use the hacker perk, but before I could, the sentry bot escaped and started to attack. I didn't get a chance to hack the two construction protectrons, so I had to destroy them. Inside the previously locked room with the sentry bot is a novice locked safe. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of both of the West Roxbury stations in Fallout 4. And with that, we wrap up the West Roxbury area of the Commonwealth. But never fear, ladies and gentlemen, there is still so much left to explore. I produce a new video every single day, and there is no shortage of content for me to produce in Fallout 4, so be sure to subscribe to find out what I publish tomorrow. Do you have any thoughts on the West Roxbury Station? Are you excited about my upcoming video about trains? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I read all of your comments, and I use them as inspiration for my future videos. If you'd like to talk about these stations with the Oxhorn community on our Discord server, be sure to click that invitation link in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.